Uh, Dr. Rena, why is it in, in some specific areas, it's still a struggle in India, bone marrow and bone marrow transplants, uh, particularly one of them, it's very difficult to find a donor. And uh, if you are able to find one, then the expense for that is something which completely goes off the charts. Well, you need a sibling that is matched. You know, you need a donation from a donor who can donate the stem cells. And he has to be matched, otherwise it will not work. The, the man, marrow transplant fails. And the chances of finding a donor randomly is about one in 100,000 or one in a million. The chances get better when there is a sibling. Unfortunately, the families in India have become nuclear. You know, 30, 40 years ago, we used to have siblings, a lot of siblings. So the chances of finding a donor was excellent. Uh, but now, the chances of finding a donor are very, very bleak because most of the families have just one or two children, and siblings are not more than two. So we have to depend on other donors who are not related, unrelated donors, it is called. Unfortunately, the registries that have been developed in India have come very late, only in the last seven or eight years. And the number of uh, list, number of people they have on their list as donors is very small. Therefore, the matching doesn't take place. You need a list of about a million people before you can you know, find a match. That is not the case in India. Some registries have been started. There were four or five registries. But the number of people who are on the list of donors is very limited, and you don't find a match. So unfortunately, we therefore have to go to registries outside the India where we can find a match. Or what has happened of late is a new technology has developed where you can you don't have to insist on full match, you know, what is called as an eight by eight match. You can do with six by eight match also. And it is easier to find six by eight match and technology has evolved where the results of these six by eight match, not full match, are as good as patients who have had a full match. So things are getting better all the time with regard to this. Right. Uh, Naveen, in, in addition to that, you know, when it comes to detection, the new technologies that are coming up, well, let's face it, one is the expense and the difficulty in finding you know, uh, bone marrow donors and matches for that. But even in simple detection, the fact of having to go for a biopsy, to have to get all of that done, again, those procedures are expensive and very difficult and unaffordable. Um, are they struck by some of the new technologies that are coming up in just the last few months or a year, uh, including one, I don't even know if, if you've heard about it, I think it's, it's just really cutting edge, things are just happening. But even with a blood test, you can start detecting fragments of things that are leading to cancer. Um, going forward, do you think detection might become cheaper and easier? Vikram, before I move to this question which you asked me, I just want to reiterate one thing which Dr. Rana has just been speaking about. I want to implore people who are seeing the show. I want to request you all that please register yourself for bone marrow donation. Bone marrow donation is nothing big deal. Unfortunately, there are only three to four registries in India, and there are not even 40,000 registered donors who are there. Well, on the other hand, we require millions of them. Every year, we are losing 40,000 children of leukemia only because there's no bone marrow transplant which takes place. And when you are donating so much, so many places, why not bone marrow? Just go and get yourself registered. There's nothing big in it. In it. They'll just take only a buckle smear and a blood maybe. And even while donating blown marrow, it's nothing big which is required. Actually, Dr. Nand, let me just, let me just push, push you further on that because a lot of people are genuinely scared of it. That's exactly I've heard what... people saying, it's like a kidney no. a donation, it's that serious, what will happen to my health? I want to go to college, I have to, you know, I want to play sports. How will I do all of that if I become a donor? So I'd like to get both of you to lay it out for us. What exactly is involved in this? This is exactly what is going to come to. This is what I'm leading to. Donating for bone marrow is as simple as donating blood. Dr. Rana, I'm right? Yeah. You just have to give the, pay, the donor, supposing the donor gives his buckle smear or something, chances are if it is a unmatched, so, uh, sorry, matched, unrelated donor, as you call it, then the patient who's the person who's going to donate, he'll be given an injection of something called a granulized stimulating factor. And then, like you, what you do in a platelet uh, donation, something like that, okay. the blood will be taken, stem cells will be taken out, and they'll be sent. There hardly, there's no side it's reaction. It's a simple also. enough procedure. There are two steps. One is registration process, that you register with the agency that collects the information. 
There's no blood donation involved at that time. Only when you find a match with somebody, you know, you take a buckle swab, keep the data in the, in the file or in the computer. When you find a match, then the do technology has changed so much, the donor doesn't have to undergo bone marrow aspiration in an operation theater. You know, they can be given growth factors for four days, and it's like a blood donation, that blood is removed from his body and dealt with accordingly and given to the recipient. Okay. So the donor doesn't lose anything, and the blood so cells sort of regenerate all the time. important to get out. I, I'd like to just... Uh, they regenerate all the time, the yeah, blood cells. speak on this, because what we started was uh, a platelet donation drive. And uh, we realized that people were not aware about what platelets were. And it was, again, that fear of, you know, how are they going to take it out and what is going to happen. So we started creating an awareness through colleges just for Tata Memorial Hospital because children were dying because of lack of platelets, not because of the cancer, but because of infections which are coming in. And they had no relatives here who could come and donate. And they just could not find enough platelets. Uh, with those drives, a lot of people started coming forward because, you know, the whole idea of right. saving a life, you're actually going to save two or three lives if you donate your platelets. So I think that really went very well with especially youngsters and colleges, and we now have surplus platelets in uh, Tata Memorial. Yeah, so that's that's, all the that's time. good to hear. Yeah.